I first started keeping venomous snakes about five to six years ago. Um, my first venomous snake exotic specimen that I've kept was a Trothalus atrox, the Western Diamondback rattlesnake. However, I have been working with snakes from a very young age um, as I grew up on the farms in KwaZulu-Natal. I find snakes as a very fascinating specimen of animal. They are uh, everything from their locomotion to their ability to possess a chemical inside their, well, for a better word to say, glands, their head, uh, which is used to kill and hunt prey items. Um, and the vast damage that a single drop or two drops of that venom can um, do to a, an adult man, I find it just fascinating and magnificent. So one of the few difficulties I have of keeping so many different species from different areas of the world is um, climate control, controlling the environment for those animals. Of course, the monocles that come from Asia and the bothrops that come from South America and the mambas that come from Africa, um, they have different needs. So I find a difficulty in um, controlling the entire environment for all the animals at that specific temperatures that they need. However, we, I find the best solution that I have to keeping them is individual cage control, which is also a very expensive um, method. However, a necessary method that's needed. And um, unfortunately in South Africa, it is a bit of a blind area. Uh, not many um, keepers, I'm not sure if I can say that, but not many keepers do uh, replicate environments to the needs of the animals. I find uh, that I tend to lean to give the animal exactly what it needs. Um, I do know of a lot of people that keep snakes in a much better capacity that give them um, perfect replicas of um, their environments and I try to I strive towards that. In the Naja uh, genus I have Naja Anulifera, Naja Haje, uh, Naja Naja, Naja Carthia, Naja Siamensis, I also have Naja Nigricolis, I I possess Naja Atra, sorry it's a very important one, uh, one of my favorite cobras. Down to the Dendroaspis, I have Dendroaspis viridis, Jamisoni, Jamisoni, Angusticeps and Polylepis. Um, I also possess a few Echis, Echis ocellatus, Echis coloratus. Um, I keep a few of the Arboreal Pit Vipers, the uh, Eyelash Vipers, the Artharist, Squamigera, Chlorechis. And then to the Bothrops, which I have quite a few of, I have Bothrops Atrox, Bothrops Columbiensis, which is basically an Atrox, Bothrops Venezuelensis, Bothrops Jararakusu. I soon will have Jararaka, Mujanai, Alternatus, and uh, different localities of Asper as well. My Crothalus species list, I have Crothalus Atrox, Crothalus Adamantius, Crothalus Seamus, Crothalus durisus durisus and Crothalus durisus culminatus. The reason I'm so passionate about the Bothrops is simple. Um, since a young boy, I've always had a fascination with the Lachesis, and that's where this all started. Uh, Lachesis and anacondas have always been my favorite snakes in the world. And, um, well, I was lucky enough to obtain anacondas as they are quite uh, readily available in the pet trade. And I still have that beautiful female up till today. As I went on, I moved on to the Crothalus durisus, as that is a South American terrestrial viper, as I wanted to own Bushmasters. From there, I went on to the Bothrops, which would be the next best thing. And I found myself absolutely in love with the Bothrops species. And I just wanted to own every single Bothrops that was out there. Uh, once, once you own these animals, I think uh, they grow on you in a way that is very difficult to explain that once I started owning Bothrops, I just wanted more and more and more. And the more I got, the more I wanted. And they, um, they're just amazing animals. You sit in your snake room, switch off the lights and watch their nocturnal behavior, watch how they hunt, watch how they move. Um, very unique uh, body um, locomotion, uh, hunting method, the strike, the, um, uh, I think on my Facebook, I've shared a few videos of uh, close encounters with Bothrops, which, uh, um, the flying snakes, as I'd like to call them, they uh, tend to launch themselves in, in uh, quite an impressive manner, which I haven't really seen with other species. And I find that completely fascinating. So most of my collection we do obtain through imports via Europe or North America. However, some of the species like the um, 
the Crotalus durusus and the Crotalus uh, simus, the Atrox, Adamantius. Those are very common in the African pet trade, so uh, you quite regularly come uh, across them. But stuff like the more rare high-end Bothrops, they aren't in the market, so we would have to import them. All of my Bothrops do come from Europe. Um, they are relatively simple snakes to breed. Uh, however, not many people have Bothrops in South Africa, so uh, the captive breeding of them in South Africa isn't that common. But yes, there is somebody that regularly breeds them, and I hope to one day uh, learn from, from my mentor, if I can call him that. And uh, yeah, I hope to be able to be producing a lot of Bothrops in my facility. Okay, so I'm briefly going to show you the snakes that I keep in my collection. Here I have Naja Naja. Naja Carthia. I have another Naja Carthia. My females are situated in those cages. I have a Bitus nasticornis down here. Bothrops Columbiensis. Bothrops Atrox. My female Bothrops Atrox. I have Dinacestridon acutus, the sharp nosed viper. Bothrops Asper. Bothrops Venezuelensis. I have Ophia Fagushana, the King Cobra, um, DRC Puff Adders, Bitus Ariatans, Bothrops Jararakusu. I have my Mambas, West African Green Mamba, Dendroaspis Viridis, Dendroaspis Jamisoni. I have Crothalus Adamantius, Bitus Ariatans from Tanzania. I have another Jamisons. Green Mamba here, Dendroaspis Jamisoni Jamisoni, Crothalus durusus, and I have a yellow anaconda. In here I have eyelash vipers, and behind I have my baby facility, with the baby facility mainly consists of Bothrops. Okay, so I'm quickly going to show you one of my favorite snakes in my collection. This is one of my Crothalus durisus, the uh, Cascabel rattlesnake, also a South American rattlesnake. He's one of my favorite snakes in my collection simply because of his uh, calm temper and his demeanor uh, and his beautiful rattle. Uh, also being a very large snake, uh, I absolutely adore him. The texture to the snake also really baffles me, so uh, I find it very interesting, the actual feel of the snake. Just going to put him back quickly. He is a very large snake for sure. This is a Surinam locality Bothrops Atrox. Um, very interesting little snake, very quick little snake, but uh, still one of my favorite species of snakes out there. Another interesting snake I would like to show you is something I think is not very common in our uh, pet trade at all. I don't often get to take this snake out, so it's always a special occasion when I do get to take her out. Okay, so this is one of my Bothrops Jararakusu. This is my female. It's a very beautiful snake. Um, not very common in the pet trade at all. So very happy with having this snake in my collection. Uh, she is a very calm snake as such, uh, but however, knowing Bothrops, they can change their mind in a snap of a finger. Um, a very deadly snake, not something that would be uh, a pleasant bite in South Africa, but uh, definitely a snake I'm very impressed with, a snake I, I take a lot of pride and joy in. I really can't wait till she's a big little monster. <laughs> Another snake I'd really like to show you is one of my favorite species in South Africa, the Dinachistridon acutus. These come from uh, Asia, China region. This is my female. 
It's a very beautiful snake. Also got a very nasty bite to them. This is my female. I have a much larger male, but um, I think she's the more impressive. Or maybe we'll leave you all to decide. Very skittish little snake. Another very interesting snake I'd like to show you is not a venomous snake, but also a South American snake. Uh, it's not often you get to see one of these. It's calm. This is my yellow anaconda. Her name is Agera. She is one of my first exotic snakes I got to own. Uh, she is a sweetheart and I absolutely adore her. Um, I think often a lot of people ask me if I could keep one snake in my collection, which would it be? This would be her and I would choose her any day of the week. Um, I've bonded quite a lot with this girl and uh, I would never part with her. It's not very often you get to find a yellow anaconda this calm. I believe they have a reputation for being quite nasty snakes, but not this girl. I know she's not an impressive sized anaconda, but uh, she does justice for me. Okay, let's go inside. Ever since I had her, I play with her quite a lot. Uh, maybe that could be it, but however, she has only bitten me twice since I've had her, so um, Maybe she's just a special child. Okay, so I want to show you one or two of my Tanzanian puff adders. These are particularly interesting snakes. This is my male. Let me see if I can just get him this side and get the female out. So here we have my male and female Tanzanian puff adders. Put this male away. So this female is quite a large female. She's an impressive sight. Um, very nasty, very feisty, always in a bad mood. But uh, I guess that's what makes her special. Every snake in a collection is special, unique, and uh, so is she. So there you go, let's go back. Excuse the mess. Okay, I'm going to take out one more snake. My West African Green Mamba. very quick snakes. So this is one of the green mambas I have. It's a West African green mamba. He has been named Tiki by my missus. A uh, very beautiful snake. Uh, often full of nonsense, but uh, I do adore him. Uh, very quick moving snakes these are. Uh, mambas are very fascinating animals. I absolutely love the uh, look of the West African Green Mambas, in my opinion, they are my favorites. Uh, the scales and the colors of these animals are truly amazing and spectacular.
I've always had a fascination with snakes. From a young boy, uh, growing up with snakes around our farm, our family farm, there was many, many, many snakes. And uh, um, to be honest with you, my ideal pet would be a Tyrannosaurus rex or Velociraptor. And unfortunately, the industry is a bit low on those. So um, I have to keep the next rex thing. But as you can see, I absolutely love them. And um, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Except the Velociraptor. Or Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> but they get big. I don't think I have the caging space for those just yet. On Wednesday, the 26th of September 2018, just the day before Ryan's 28th birthday, he was envenomated in his thumb by the fang of a black mamba whilst extracting its venom. Venom that is used to make anti-venom that will save many lives. Sadly, he had a severe anaphylactic reaction moments after the envenomation. He passed away in hospital on Saturday, the 29th of September, 2018. Ryan, you will be missed by many. Rest in peace.